Uh, yesterday, for the first time, Jen Psaki said that that war was possible. They could invade. If Russia does invade Ukraine, what do we do next? What's our next move after that? We don't have any moves. Look, this was done a year ago. This d deal was done a year ago when the United States gave up its energy independence and allowed the prices of energy to go way high. What does that mean? It means Russia has all the cards. Oil's above $80 a barrel. They can do whatever they need to do, whatever they want to do. You know, I want to go back and look. 35 years ago, Vladimir Putin wrote his graduate school dissertation, which I have read. Hmm. And he wrote saying, I'm going to make Russia great again, and here's how I'm going to do it. It's going to be with energy exports to the West. That's exactly what he's done. And the important thing happened, not today's meetings, not tomorrow's. It was yesterday's meeting. And it was a meeting between the head of NATO and the German chancellor. And the German chancellor came out and said, military option is off the table. We're not going to respond militarily, no matter what Putin does. And we're not even going to send lethal weapons to Ukraine. Ukraine is going to have to be on its own without those weapons. Right. So, you know, I just keep thinking, Rob, and I'm so delighted to be on with this panel of rock stars that you have, who all are familiar with what I'm going to say. The first phone call President Trump had with the German chancellor, then Angela Merkel, she said to him, what are you going to do about Ukraine? And he said, what are you going to do about Ukraine? It's in your neighborhood. It's in back your backyard. Right. And if you're not going to do anything about Ukraine, we're in a bad position. Look, Germany's not going to do anything because Russia controls the energy supply to Europe, particularly to Germany. It's a cold winter. Energy prices have doubled. Home heating oil has doubled in the last year for the Germans. The Germans aren't going to risk that over Ukraine. So, uh, KT, uh, does that mean effectively that at the moment Germany is basically in charge of NATO's agenda and approach instead of uh, the United States and Biden? For this particular purpose, yes. Because if Germany is going to back down from any fight, there's very little anyone else can do. Look, if President Biden wanted to seize the initiative again, he had it a year ago. He, he inherited a terrific amount of leverage over Russia, over Germany, over Ukraine, over everybody. But but President Biden threw it away. Um, if he really wanted to make a difference, President Biden would today say, I'm objecting to the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline right. that feeds Russia to um, Germany. Number two, I'm going to increase American energy independence. I'm going to allow American fracking, oil and natural gas. Number three, we're going to export that energy and we're going to give you Europe. We're going to give you an option. You can import American energy, which you know will be cheap, it'll be reliable, it'll be consistent, or take your luck with the Europe, with the Russians. I think the Europeans would be very um, interested in that conversation, but Joe Biden's not going to have it. Instead, he's just going to scold everybody and, and look like a paper tiger. You know, Putin's already gotten his objective. He's weakened NATO, and ultimately he knows Ukraine will probably fall into his lap. Just an update, uh, Rick yeah. Gates, before you, uh, you go here. Uh, oil prices right now at $86, just over $86 a barrel. That's the highest since Barack Obama was president. It's the highest we've seen yeah. uh, in seven years. Rick, to you. Yeah. yeah, look, the oil price is, is going to be very important. The, the higher the oil price, the more protection Putin has uh, uh, economically. Yeah. Uh, KT, absolutely agree with you on Germany. For me, that was one of the last deterrents that I thought could potentially work. Obviously, the German government's divided uh, on this issue. It looks like, you know, Chancellor Schultz is going to say Nord Stream 2 is a private economic project. We're not going to touch it with Putin. Tomorrow, uh, Blinken is meeting with the uh, big three, Germany, France, Britain. What do you expect will come out of that in the wake of a, a meeting today with President Zelensky that's not going to resolve any differences? What other deterrents do we have to look forward to? Oh, I think they'll all issue a really strong statement, and they'll talk about really tough economic sanctions. But the fact of the matter is that Russia has those economic sanctions they're talking about against Russia aren't going to make a whole lot of difference. We've already sanctioned Russia as, as much as it can be sanctioned. There's not much left. I mean, the only thing that would make a big difference is if Russia wasn't able to export its oil and natural gas. And that's not going to happen. You know, the, the, the price of oil that you mentioned, $80 a barrel, that's really key. A year ago, it was $40 a barrel. Wow. And the Russian economy needs that export. I mean, the Russian economy, if, if the, think of that number 80. If the, if the price of oil is above $80 a barrel, Russia can fund its military, it can fund its government, it can fund everything, including adventurism. If it goes to $40 a barrel, all that, all that budget just got cut in half. So if that oil price is above 80, 
Putin's in great shape. Mm. And he knew that yeah, 35 years question. ago if, when if, his dissertation. <laughs> but one, one, one quick follow-up. If, if the U.S. has taken military intervention off the table, do you think the European allies would coalesce and actually defend Ukraine militarily? No, Germany did it yesterday. Germany said they're taking the military option off the table.